Greetings and blessings to you from Global Harvest Assembly. We pray that this message will ignite a passion for Jesus Christ in your heart and encourage you to live out your faith boldly. May you encounter God's love and grace in a powerful way today. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Remember that one? So we understand that we're supposed to build our lives on the rock of Jesus Christ, but sometimes we get stuck on how do we do that actually. So this morning, I'm going to take you through a few simple steps on how to build your life on Jesus, and then Pastor Ruben's going to round it off. But before we jump into it, let's just commit our time in prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Jesus, we thank you for what you taught and what you're teaching. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us and quickening your word. More than anything, we don't just want to be hearers. We want to be doers of your word. So give us grace to hear and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this concept of building on the rock is taken from Matthew chapter 7, that song that we learned in Sunday school about the wise builder and the foolish builder. It actually comes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. And this is Jesus' teaching. So Jesus is telling a crowd of people. He says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So this is a story that Jesus is telling the people. Now what's interesting is he says, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. So he says we can't just be hearers of the words, we have to be doers of the word. But even more specifically, this comment is made after one of the greatest sermons he preached. Does anyone know what that sermon is called? Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, where he gives out all of these descriptions and what it is to live a godly life. So I actually, I'm going to give you homework. I want you to go back over this week and I want you to read chapters 5, 6, and 7 in Matthew. Because Jesus says if you hear these words and you practice them, then you are building on the rock. The rock of his truth, the rock of his revelation, the rock of Jesus. So I want you to go back and, and read chapters 5, 6, and 7. What's interesting is Jesus tells you, he doesn't say, if you build on the rock, there will be no storms. He doesn't say, if you build on the rock, there won't be any storms, but if you build on the sand, there's going to be storms. No. The storm comes. The storm comes whether you built on the rock or the sand. But how we endure that storm depends on what our foundation is. So when we talk about foundation, you know, it's, it's the base for which you can build your structures. So Tanjong Point has a foundation, and because of that foundation, they're able to build upwards. I'm going to show you a picture of what happens when you have a faulty foundation in the natural. Yes, yeah, yes. So this, this happened in 1980. And Dave, you, uh, you remember where was it? Ampam. Okay? KL. KL. All right, it's one of the most devastating building collapse in Malaysia's history. So this is an entire tower that just fell. Why? Because after heavy rains, um, they weren't maintaining the retaining wall, there was a massive landslide and this whole structure came crashing down. This is a picture in the natural 
of what happens when a building doesn't have a solid foundation. But this picture can also be a picture of what happens to our lives when we don't have a solid foundation. We have seen people, we have heard about people, we've watched movies about people whose lives completely crashed because their foundation was on something faulty. The truth is, the only foundation that we can have is the foundation of Jesus. There is no other foundation. If you build your life on anything other than the truth and revelation of who Jesus is and what he taught, you're going to crash eventually. It's guaranteed. There's only one solid foundation. And you might say, well, you know, I believe in Jesus. I have, my life is built on Jesus. I'm a Christian. I come to church on Sunday. But I'm going to challenge us to really examine whether or not our lives are truly built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Some of the common foundations that we build on, reputation, talents, looks, abilities. There are people who build their whole lives on their own ability, on their physical strength, on the way that they're perceived by others, the opinions of people, people who build their lives on their bank account. They build their lives on their connections, their titles. But guess what happens? Any of those things can change in a blink of an eye. When I was growing up, the, the Superman that I grew up with was Christopher Reeves. Christopher Reeves, he was handsome, he was strong, he played Superman, he was completely and totally um, indestructible, right? Well, what happened to him? He got into a terrible accident falling off a horse, broke his back, was paralyzed. In a moment, the iconic figure, Superman, lost his ability to control his own body. In a moment. And if you go back and you do interviews with him and how he's reflecting on his life, you realize how easy it is to build on the foundation of your fame, your status, your success, your ability to do things. But in a blink of an eye, all of that can change. When you build on Jesus, guess what? That doesn't change. He says, I am the Lord God and I do not change. He is the same today, yesterday, tomorrow, and forevermore. That's why we have to build on him. Because your status may change, your health may change, your bank account may change, your abilities may change, your connections may change, but Jesus does not change. So that's why we have to build on him. Now you might be wondering, well, how do we build on Jesus? Don't we just say that we're a Christian? Well, that's the first step. The first step, of course, is faith. Faith in believing that Jesus is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do. So believing in Jesus, of course, is the very first step in following after him and building your life on him. But you know, it's not just about saying, I believe in Jesus. Because there are scriptures that talk about how the demons even know who Jesus is, but they're not saved. So it's not just about, oh, I go to church on Sundays, or on my IC, I have the designation Christian, or I consider myself as a Christian. It can't just be that. Faith is the first step, but it's followed by having a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship is key. You know, when Jesus was giving the Sermon on the Mount, when he talked through the Beatitudes, uh, chapters 5, 6, and 7, and Matthew. He talks about if you really want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, 
Our righteousness has to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees had the outward appearance of being holy and righteous. They had the outward appearance of following the law, but their hearts were a million miles away from God. That's where relationship comes in. If you say you're a follower of Jesus, it has to be followed up with a relationship. And you know, if you're only meeting with someone occasionally, I don't know what kind of relationship that is. To build our lives on the rock of Jesus Christ, we have to have a close relationship with Jesus. And we know that we have a relationship with him because we obey what he tells us to do. Right? When we walk closely with Jesus, we are compelled to become more like him. When we spend time in his word, we are challenged to obey what he tells us to do. And the part of that obedience is what Pastor Ruben has preached this before. It, it's about an alignment. You know, when, when I come to the Bible and when I spend time with the Lord, I have my own ideas, I have my own expectations, I have my own standard of what I think is right and what I think is wrong. And then I sit down with the Lord and I open up the scripture and I read what he thinks, what his standard is, how he evaluates righteousness. And I can't just say, well, that's Jesus's way. This is my way. No, if I have a relationship with him and I'm committed to being a disciple, I have to align my thinking, my lifestyle, my choices, my daily walk with what the Bible says. The Bible says you can't just call him Lord and not do what he tells you to do. You can't say, Jesus, you're my savior and my king, but I'm not going to obey you. It doesn't work that way. Building your life on the rock of Jesus Christ means you have a relationship with him. That when you come to him, that you know that there's constantly a work that's being done in our hearts and mind that aligns us with who he is, what he thinks, and we in turn obey what he calls us to do. And then of course, you need perseverance. It is not always easy to follow Jesus. In fact, I can guarantee you and say it is not easy to follow Jesus. It's countercultural, especially in our day and age where we've come out of humanism and man is king. Man is in the center of the universe. Everything begins and ends with man. So it's not easy to follow after Jesus. Sometimes it can be difficult. There was one slide that helps us in being able to have that relationship and being able to obey and being able to persevere. And it's actually community. Do you know it's difficult to follow after Jesus in isolation? There are people who have to do that because they're the only believer in their village. But as soon as they latch on to other believers, boy, isn't it a lifesaver. We cannot do this in isolation. We need one another. We need the body of Christ to be able to build our lives on Jesus Christ. Why? Because, one, we're called the body of Christ, not just the arm of Christ, the hand of Christ, the foot of Christ. We're the body of Christ. And we work together. We fulfill our potential. We achieve our purpose by being connected to one another. We also have shortcomings and blind spots. So by being connected with each other, we can help each other out. There might be a day where I'm feeling weak and discouraged, I'm physically exhausted, I'm downcast. My brother and sister in the Lord comes around me, puts their hand under my arm, helps lift me up. We can do this. 
And then when they have a moment of weakness where they're feeling discouraged, when they're feeling hopeless, I can come and put my arm around them and say, no, we can do this in Christ Jesus. We encourage one another. We spur on each other into good works. We challenge one another. And there are times when we'll in love confront one another. But to build on the rock of Jesus Christ, we need each other. That's the way that God created us to be. We need a relationship with him, and we need a relationship with his body so that we can fully come into all that he has for us to do. So this morning, remember, make sure you're building on the rock of Jesus Christ. If there's anything in our life that is based on a foundation that is outside of Christ, stop building on that. Repent of that. Get rid of that. And ask the Lord to help you build again. Because if you build on anything other than Christ, like the building that collapsed, rains come, storms come, troubles come, challenges come. And if we don't have a strong foundation, we'll crash. So you need to build your life on Christ. Pastor Ruben? Amen. Just two of the slides. I think one says faith, and then another one says obedience. And Galatians 5, 6 connects those two words, and it says the only thing that counts is faith, obeying or faith working through love. You know, there's two ways we can try to obey God. We can obey God as slaves and servants, afraid of punishment. If I don't do what God wants me to do, He's going to punish me. Or we can obey God out of faith and expectation and because how much we are loved by Him. And because of his ability he's given us to obey him. You know, one of my favorite scriptures in Philippians 2 says, It is God who works in us both to will and to do according to his purpose. So God can motivate us and give us the motivation to desire to want to and the ability to obey him. And so God wants us to obey him relationally. You know, this, it's, it's funny when you, if a stranger walks into your house and just say you have maids in your house, I wonder if they can tell who the maid is and who the child is in the day, by the way they work. If you weren't introduced to, well, this is my child, or this, they just say they were the same age, and uh, could someone tell which worker had a relationship? And so that's the key to obedience, you know? God wants us to, out of relationship, to say, Lord, and in fact, whenever I open the Bible, say, Holy Spirit, speak to me before I read, um, give me understanding, help me apply what I'm about to read to my life, and help me be a doer of your word. There's two main areas of obedience that we're going to close. The first area of obedience is when nobody's looking. It's how you do life, what you do when nobody's watching except God. And how you do life as an employee, as an employer, as a colleague. Just your day-to-day -day life. And the second area of obedience is what we're doing for the kingdom. Your areas of service. How you're contributing to building together with others. Whether it's in the church community or uh, the Christian community. It's, it's your daily obedience and your obedience in serving. And that's how we are the salt and the light by, by people watching just not what we do, but how we do what we do. So that's a wonderful reminder that storms come regardless of your foundation and it's too late to build when the storm comes. Right? And that's what many Christians try. Well, no, I'm going through this help. You know, they don't pray when the problem comes, then they start praying. No, no. When you pray before the problem, it's easy to come through the problem. Don't try to build until something happens. Build when there's peace. Right? Build. No one builds a building when there's a heavy, a bad storm. They wait for the storm to settle and then they build. Also in the natural. Don't be motivated by problems. There's too many crisis motivated Christians. When there's no, when there's no problems, oh, I'm too busy for God. But when there's a lot of problems, now all of a sudden we have all the time to do the right thing. So God wants you to know how much He loves you. Faith working through agape, faith working through love. Know how much He loves you as His children. And say, Father, because You love me, I want to obey You, I want to serve You. Because You love me so much, You give me so much. Let my gratitude be revealed in my obedience. And, and when you do things out of faith and love, guess what? You're not just doing things like a slave. You say, God, I thank You that whatever my area of service is or my obedience, I'm doing it unto You, not unto men. I'm doing it with joy. 
because I know that you're watching and you bless me. And here's a, a little fine print terms and conditions. You know, when you don't do things for man, but unto the Lord, it doesn't matter whether man appreciates. I've heard a lot of Christians say, I done, I've served so hard for so long and nobody says thank you. Or you're not doing it for them. Remember what Jesus told Peter? Peter, you love me, feed my sheep. He didn't say, Peter, you love my sheep, feed them. Because Peter, you know, you're going to be disappointed if you're doing things just for them. So whatever we do, it's great. We need to encourage one another. We need to appreciate one another. But that can't be our main motivation. Right? And all that we do, we do it as unto to the Lord. And that He will build us. He will make us stronger as we encourage one another. And so no matter what we go through, He will help us stand. Amen? So you're a church that's built on a rock. It will not be like that apartment building. And, and that's the thing I heard even in Australia. I think it was in Sydney. They showed this huge bungalow of mansions right by the coast and on the hilltop and the land was, this, the, the earth was giving way. And so like, breaching onto the boundaries of the house. And these million dollar houses were in peril because they were so close to sand that was, to, to, they were built where they couldn't withstand. So it's amazing how these millionaires have bought the prime property, I think even in Hong Kong, in many countries that are right by the coast on a hilltop and this landslide and, and the earth just caving in and there goes their, they lost the land basically, lost their house. So we don't want to be like that. We want to be built on Christ and He will help us stand. Amen. And when you stand, like what Jesus told Peter, when you come through, you can strengthen others. Nothing is wasted. No problem is wasted. Whatever your problem you come through, you're more equipped to help somebody when they go through that. Amen. Let's stand together. And we give thanks. Okay, I think the food is on the way. I assume the last time. So we can have fellowship until it arrives. But let's 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 um let's give thanks with a grateful heart. Okay.